Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kate Goldenring, and uh, I'm excited today to talk about the Wasm Wilderness. Like Nigel mentioned, I am a senior software engineer at Fermion, and I've been lucky since the beginning of my career to be an open source software developer. I started out in the edge space, focusing on Kubernetes on the edge, and maintain a project called Ocri, that's a CNCF project, and also serve as co-chair of the CNCF IoT Edge Working Group. And over time, I got interested in this amazing uh, technology called WebAssembly, and I've moved into that space. And I am a maintainer of Spin and SpinCube, and am passionate about making the component model more accessible, and am serve as co-chair of the Bytecode Alliance documentation SIG. In general, what drives me is a passion for sustainability, so I'm always looking for ways to make software greener, and that kind of relates to what I like to do outside of work, which is shown in this picture, but I love being in the mountains, and I'm an avid mountaineer. And actually, when I'm not at my desk, I'm oftentimes helping instruct mountaineering courses with my local mountaineering club. And when I thought about this talk, I couldn't help but think about where we are, which is Salt Lake City. And these mountains are actually quite important to me. These are the mountains my mom grew up climbing in, and if not for them, I never would have gotten into mountaineering. And so that was on my mind while I was thinking of the power of WebAssembly, and this all melded together into me realizing that WebAssembly would be a great person to climb a mountain with. And so I'm gonna take us through that, this wilderness of WASM, and the fact that WebAssembly has summited some major technological peaks. And when you're going about learning to climb a mountain, there are a lot of lessons and techniques that you're trying to put to practice, and I noticed that these same techniques that I teach people in our mountaineering courses, WebAssembly somehow has been using to summit each of these mountains. So to start, the first thing you do before you're climbing a mountain is you look at some trip reports. The idea here is that you wanna learn from past climbers, learn from their mistakes, their successes, so that you can have a more successful climb. And that's what WebAssembly did. It was learning from predecessor technologies that tried to extend the capability of the browser, such as ActiveX, Java, Silverlight, and Flash, and learn from some of the, like the, some of the shortcomings of those technologies and extend beyond them. And so all these technologies end up not being, being able to reach the summit because they did not quite have the security that they needed. They ended up becoming vectors for malware attacks. And this in mind, the authors of the WebAssembly specification made it security specific. They focused on security when designing that specification. And they also, instead of being a pri proprietary system, made it an open standard. And beyond that, in order to encourage more people to be involved with it, they made it concise. And actually here on this slide is one page, one singular page where if you can understand it, all these Greek letters, which I personally cannot, um, you can write a WebAssembly interpreter that can execute WebAssembly and you know it is scientifically proven to isolate it in a sandbox. And actually, if you wanna learn more about this, Luke Wagner is one of the authors of this paper and he's coming up soon, so feel free to save your questions for him. Another essential rule of going into the outdoors is bring a map. Um, the idea here is that you wanna make sure you have the resources you need. You're not gonna go into a space in the wilderness unless you know you have shelter, water, and a path forward. And that's what WebAssembly did as it was leaving the browser and going to the server. It brought a map, which was WASI, the WebAssembly systems interface. And what this did is it ensured that a WebAssembly component could access resources on the server, such as the file system, IO, and HTTP. And it did it in a way such that now I can write WebAssembly services that can receive HTTP requests and send HTTP requests. And I know that I, if I run this on a WebAssembly runtime that implements WASI P2, my same application can run on any of these runtimes and act as a WebAssembly service. And all of this sits on top of the semantics of the component model, which is another open standard. So if you're going to be a good tenant of the outdoors, one important thing is to stop the spread of invasive species. And if you've ever been at a trailhead, sometimes they have those big wooden bulletin boards with all of this information, and it'll say, oh, this is a preview of the, the trail you're going on, maybe beware of bears. But sometimes naturalists will post up information about invasive species in the area. And this is a bit controversial, but there have been some species, such as the spotted lanternfly, where some people basically touted, if in doubt, stomp it out, basically saying if you see one of these, even if you're not quite sure that's what it is, kill it, because we cannot risk this species spreading. 
And this, if in doubt, stomp it out, is echoing in the background of your platform engineers. They're not gonna let you run anything on that environment. There are guardrails. And they're only gonna let you run something that is isolated for this multi-tenant cloud environment. And WebAssembly is very good at keeping invasive species from spreading. And that's because it has a secure sandbox and capability-based security. And, um, and it is even more secure than some of the more pervasive uh, ways of isolating your applications in the cloud, such as containers. But it's also just as packageable. So con WebAssembly components can actually be packaged as an OCI artifact just as you would a container. And the WebAssembly working group within the CNCF has done work over the past year to standardize the artifact layout for WebAssembly OCR artifacts so that all WebAssembly runtimes can now understand the same OCI format and execute your WebAssembly component on that cloud or another cloud. Also, WASI is providing interfaces for cloud-specific WebAssembly applications. So beyond HTTP, which we already know from the server, there's WASI key values being developed to be able to access, for example, caches, um, and WASI config to be able to access secrets. And so this means that across cloud platforms, your application could have access to the same resources without having to rebuild that application. Another important part um, of climbing mountains is remembering that it's hard. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to get to the top of a mountain. And because of this, there's actually a walking technique that mountaineers will use. It's called the rest step. And the idea with the rest step is you're either actively moving or statically standing. And the point of this is that you're only using energy when you're moving towards your goal. And WebAssembly is very good at the rest step. Um, and that's because it's unique in being an isolated form of executing your code that starts instantly. It takes less than a, a millisecond to instantiate WebAssembly and start it. Less than a millisecond. So that means that when you don't want to be using it, you can tear it down. And then when you do want to use it, you can bring it back up and fully scale to zero. And this is particularly important on the edge where these constrained devices, or where these devices are constrained with how many resources they have access to. And opens the door for a multi-tenant, secure, serverless platforms on the edge. Uh, this image here is from some load testing we did on Fermion Cloud, our multi-tenant uh, platform for serverless WebAssembly, where we issued requests to 10,000 WebAssembly applications at once, and you can see the CPU spiked on that host and then immediately dropped back down to its baseline with every single one of those WebAssembly uh, components starting on request time. So beyond... Uh, conserving energy by walking efficiently. Another way to conserve energy going up a mountain is to carry as little weight as possible. And one way that mountaineers do this is by optimizing the weight on their harness. And so instead of having a jumble of different gear that you're gonna put on there, you wanna have multi-purpose gear. And so this is my favorite piece of gear. It's called the Petzl Microtraction, and you can use it as a pulley or for ascension. And WebAssembly is very good at being a lightweight multi-purpose tool. Uh, and there's no space that is more multi-purpose than the IoT space. There are billions of devices online already, and by 2030, we are projected to have over 40 billion devices. And this space is vastly heterogeneous. There's different boards, platforms, SDKs. So it's really hard to be a universal embedded developer. And sometimes you're limited in what languages you can use, maybe only systems languages like C. And what WebAssembly does is as long as you can put a WebAssembly runtime on that device, maybe a minified one like Whammer, you can then run a WebAssembly application there. And you can t write it in any language of your choosing so long as it compiles down to WebAssembly. And one group that is working on standardizing this vastly heterogeneous ecosystem is the embedded special interest group within the Bytecode Alliance. And they've been working on creating WASI interfaces that are specific to these IoT spaces. And actually, I really encourage you to stay to the very last talk of this conference, where Mikhail and Merlin will be talking about the research that they just published, I think a month or so ago, about their experience using WASI USB and WASI I2C uh, I2C on these embedded devices. And for our final peak, um, it is one thing that is really important to remember is to find ways to get the most out of your destination. So this lake here is called Foggy Lake, and it didn't actually used to be that popular, but now it's impossible to find a parking spot. And it's not because of the lake, it's still just as foggy as ever. 
it's because of the activities you can do around it that more and more people are discovering. So um, the peak on the left, uh, that's called Del Campo Peak, and the peak on the right is Gothic Peak, and a lot of people will come to climb those mountains. And if you're not climbing a mountain, maybe you're camping along the edge of the water, or you're bringing floaties to float out on top of the cold water. And WebAssembly is similarly very good at enhancing existing experiences. Um, and it is a common mechanism for plug providing plugins to existing architectures. And this started in the browser where it provided a way to extend it in a language agnostic and secure way. And now we are already seeing this in various different applications. So Envoy extensions provide a way to extend Envoy Gateway with WebAssembly. And they were one of the earlier adopters here. Shopify functions, you can write in any language now with WebAssembly, a way to extend your checkout experience there. Um, and uh, code editors are oftentimes adding extensions as well that you can write using uh, WebAssembly, such as VS Code, and now the recently released editor Z. And so we've made it through the Wasm wilderness, um, through all six of these peaks. And I wanna remind us of what brought us through all of those, the kind of the bedrock of the mountain. And that really has been the open standards. We started with the WebAssembly specification that brought WebAssembly to the browser. And then we had WASI, which enabled it to leave the browser. And then we had the component model, which made it so that we could have more higher level types for our WebAssembly modules. And then we have the OCI artifact specification that's enabled us to unify packaging for WebAssembly. So I invite you to imagine a future where my application doesn't have to be limited to one technological peak or one technological domain. Rather, my application can move with me from the browser to the edge because it is portable, secure, and we have unified runtimes. And this is all only possible with the continued evolution of these open standards. So with that, I wanna thank you for joining me through the Wasm Wilderness.